What is up? It's Hobbyist First, here to take a look at this Blood Axe Orc kill tank built from a plastic dump truck toy. About a month ago, I was challenged by Brack the Warboss to participate in the Toy to Tank challenge, which involved taking some children's toy and converting it into an orc vehicle. And I've had a plastic dump truck in my storage area for about a year and a half that I picked up at Walmart and I was planning to either make a battle wagon or a kill tank or some, some large orc vehicle out of it. And uh, I was inspired by you know, some, some stuff online. Um, notably, there was a movie or a documentary uh, about the, the rampage that the guy went on with this armored bulldozer and he ran over this town. And I remember seeing that and as, as terrible as it was, I thought that it, it looked very orky. And I was also inspired by the, the um, transformer that uh, was built from all the construction vehicles uh, back when I was a kid, and, uh, and especially the, the bright green coloring of it. And I looked up online uh, when I searched armored dump truck recently and learned that in uh, some... Um, countries there's like insurgents that use civilian dump trucks and mining vehicles and they armor them up so uh you know there's plenty of source material for armored construction vehicles or or construction vehicles that are converted into um you know wep weaponized things so anyway as a blood axe player i knew it was going to have to be camouflaged and i wanted to pick a scheme uh after my build that uh that was that was totally off the wall so uh, yeah, this is this is my ar armored dump truck. Uh, gonna run as a kill tank, and I will <clears throat> excuse me. I will take in a tour of vehicle and show some of the, the function features and, and talk about some of the bits that I used. But you can see here that um, spin it around that it retains most of its uh, dump truck shape, except it's covered in slabs of armor. Uh, there's a gun emplacement on the top, which uh, is built out of a Space Marine Dreadnought. You see the Dreadnought is the core of it, and it has a Scorcha, has two sets of twin uh, big shooters, and it also has the, uh, I forget the name of this gun, but it's got like 20 or 30 shots. It's, it's not the anti-tank one, it's the the more DACA gun, but it's covered in armor plates. Uh, the, the, the frame of it is built out of an old 40K barricade piece, and then it's just slabs of armor and some orky bits stuck on, and put some magnets on here so that it can <clears throat> stick on there and, and swivel. Uh, there's some orcs riding in there. I'll pull them out, but you can see uh, it, it will hold six, and uh, I think two will fit up here. Let me get these these boys out of the way, <clears throat> and I'll show you inside inside in the here the dump truck it does dump, so it could drive up and literally spill spill boys out of the back of it. Uh, I did a checkered floor on the inside because I wanted to break up the green uh, armor and have some some interesting thing. I was gonna do metal, you know, like uh, just beaten metal, but it works. Gotta get checks in there somewhere. Uh, I see in the back is like this ion thruster. It's built out of a, um, I think it's a piece from like a play doh thing my kids had, or some like dough mold. A uh, couple heavy flamers from uh, old Lehman Rust bits. Uh, these are the original wheels. It was supposed to have wheels. You see that it would have ridden a little bit higher, but I wanted it to have a more aggressive stance, so I dropped the front, uh, dropped the front down and these panels lift off and you can see the drive part of the front and these are built out of servo haulers that came from uh, kill team uh, supplement there's a, a las cannon half in there 
and there's a 3D printed wheel. I think I found that on Thingiverse or Cults, I don't remember, but I 3D printed some wheels. Uh, the reason I did those <clears throat> is I wanted there to be something visible there, and also it's something for the, the armor plates to kind of bump up on so that they're not uh, prone to falling in. And I'll show you the other side. Uh, this this one's got three hooks. These are made out of, um, I got them left over from Chaos Rhinos that I built. So there's three hooks on there. There's two on the other side. And you see the panels have some strips with rivets and some, uh, some plates just to break up the surface. This one here is more servo hauler bits. There's a piece of a searchlight in there, and then there's a half a barrel. But <clears throat> there's just greeblies breaking up that flat surface, and I painted the entire part of that rusty on the inside to uh, just kind of, you know, make a neutral tone. Um, you can see I used uh, plastic card for uh, or sheet styrene for a lot of this, and I used different thicknesses to break that up. And there's some 3D printer. Um, supports or some like rafts that when I when I do 3d prints at work I sometimes save the rafts if they're flat and have some rectangular shape uh, you can see there's a piece of a 3d print raft over here as well and I use some corrugated paper for different areas again just to break up the the flat texture of the armor plates so you can see some corrugated paper there there's a large piece on the back of the cab and there's a couple pieces here and there. There's one on this this plate to break that up. There's one over here. Uh, the blade from some bits. Here's another thing from from that servo hauler kit. I thought it was like a toe a tow bar. This is from Chaos Rhino. This spiky thing. And I use some plastic card that has tile pattern cut into it. And if you're an orc builder, uh, I highly recommend adding in some of this stuff into your your pile of plastic that you work with because it's nice alternative to these plain flat panels but also some of these plain flat panels that you see are just the back side of this and i'm able to take this and without a knife i can just just bend and 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 snap off pieces and that speeds up the build uh, on on some of the parts uh, so i got like some exposed there this is a smaller smaller scale uh, grid. There's some grid over here as well. <clears throat> this is from like the model railroad section of the hobby store. Uh, it's sold by the same company that sells the uh, the plastic card or the styrene, but they have some like ladders and stuff. But I use those for railings and things in some of my other projects. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the before I forget, and this part here. This is from a Razorback, and the bottom of the gun is pieced to a whirlwind kit that I gave up on years ago so uh, without the magnets it fit in there fairly snug but I'm trying to get better with using magnets so there's an excuse to do that it doesn't it doesn't fit flush unfortunately there's a little wiggle but if I if I pick out those magnets then it'll sit in there flush and there's just like a little bit of magnet contact but I don't know I'll, I'll figure that out I, I'm like I said I'm, I'm developing skills with magnets. Um, also, some uh, things that I would highly recommend. Oops, sorry about my tripod. Uh, some things that I would also recommend for orc builders are these styrene L pieces. And you can see that I'm using them for reinforcement in different spots. There's a couple um, holding these corners together because I'm trying to think like an orc mech and how they would bolt together plates and I use these plates to kind of cover up the seams on a lot of these parts. So I've got some here and, and it just adds visual interest. And then I inverted the L's to make like a vision slit so that the drivers would, um, you know, they'd be safe from incoming fire and also so that the somebody looking at the model isn't looking directly into the cabin. I wanted to have like a narrow vision slit. Um, um, show you one last feature oh there's some horns some, excuse me hiccups all of a sudden uh some horns that came from the gorkonaut kit and one last thing i guess i will show just to confirm that this is oh oh sorry um the wheels and another thing if you're building using toy kits the wheels which are glued on sorry i can't take them off but um 
the wheels were hollow on the back, and that's a problem with a lot of toys. They move a little bit, but yeah, I guess they move. Um, a lot of the toy <clears throat> toy kits have hollow insides, and that's just you know because the detail's not important for a kid's toy. But if I'm building a gaming model, I don't want obviously a hollow tire because it that doesn't look very realistic. So I used a dial caliper to get a rough inner diameter. And then I use that same dial caliper as like a compass to scribe that circle. And then I, I cut it out and, and fit it in there. And there's like some spools for my daughter's like little sewing craft kit. Uh, actually, we're on the bottom. I'll sh <laughs> you see I didn't fully paint the bottom, but uh, <clears throat> while I'm on the bottom, you can see there's a speaker here and a battery port. And that's because this is a kid's construction toy. And I retained the sound function on it and it has an engine sound and you, you can see here that I painted a little lightning bolt on there as a as a glyph to represent some uh, some energy happens there so the orcs can activate um, you know fight mode on their on their their kill tank by here you go and there's a little red light that blinks I think if you it makes a couple different sounds so uh, yeah, real real excited for this. And what 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 kind of time goes into a build like this? Uh, honestly, spent about thirty hours on the build, and at least half of that was cutting the rivets. Well, no, I should say about a third of it was armoring up the vehicle. About a third of it was cutting the rivets, and each one of these is cut out of a styrene rod. And I used an X-Acto knife to slice off the little like pucks of, uh, of plastic. And then I take two X-Acto blades. One has to have a really sharp point on it. And I stab these little, little discs. And then I dip them in a little pool of plastic cement. And then I use the other X-Acto blade to push that one free. Because unless the glue sticks right to the, the, the styrene sheet that's here it's not going to remove it from the exacto blade and that's why that sharp point is important so i use the second point of the blade to like pop it free uh and it's it, it's a tedious process but i i really like the way the orc vehicles look when they have all these bolts and rivets holding things on and when you do the weathering which is all the rust streaks and the rust coloring around it i think it adds a lot of uh, visual interest breaks up those flat panels and uh, I would say a third was spent on armoring the truck, a third was spent on rivets, and I spent a third of the time building this gun. I think I spent an entire Saturday and a half a Sunday of, of my life building, <laughs> building this thing because I knew that it was going to be uh, a focal point and I wanted to retain parts of the dreadnought. And, um, you know, I kind of made my life difficult with the painting because there are a lot of nooks and crannies, but a lot of this stuff is built out of sprue and just little like off cuts of pieces. And I really didn't have a great plan going into it. I was just slapping parts on. And once I was satisfied with the placement of the guns, then I had to build armor around it. And I wanted the armor to look natural. So there's parts where it overlaps and there's uh, there's little L's that are holding it together. So um, some, some orky engineering went into that. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my toy to tank challenge kill tank uh again thanks to brack to war boss um fellow orc builder and hobbyist and he um you know he's got a, an awesome vehicle that he made out of a uh, plastic car he made a, a kill tank also his has got a bunch of guns and stuff on it too and it was really fun having uh having a dedicated project that had a deadline you know i don't don't often work in a way that, oh, I have to get this done. But I spent probably two weeks doing the build and getting everything assembled. And then I gave myself a little bit of a palette cleanser and I painted a couple other minis for a few weeks. And then I spent uh, a week painting it up. And I would say 30 hours for the build and about 25 hours for the paint and a good half of that 25 hours for the paint was the weathering. I mean, there's 
there's many layers of weathering here. And that's one of the one of the things I learned watching some of the some good YouTube uh, content about tank weathering and vehicle weathering is that there should be different levels of weathering. You shouldn't just do like all chips or all streaks. There's all different types of weathering on here, whether it's like dust on the bottom or there's paint chips, but there's different colored paint chips and there's paint specks and there's there's paint scrapes. There's uh, sponge chipping. There are uh, rust streaks. There's there's an overall wash and, uh, and a lot of that wash is pulled down so that you can, if you're looking, here you can see there's like vertical streaks and then it was a challenge because my vehicle is built angled forward like it's not it's not level so the bed is angled and I had to paint and pull the streaks so that they were following uh, perpendicular to the ground like gravity was pulling those those um, rust streaks down so there's <coughs> excuse me uh, you know there's there's a number of challenges in, in getting it to look realistic and you, know, there's, you see the, the thruster on the back um, a number of challenges to getting it to look realistic, but um, I think I think it was an awesome, awesome uh, opportunity to, like I said, work to a deadline. And I was collaborating with uh, um, a content creator, Brack the War Boss, who I who I just love. And uh, yeah, it's it's real exciting to be done. And now I can add this to my collection of orc vehicles. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. And take care.